So we've got a little break in the weather. Uh, three days or four days coming of calm and uh, dry and sunny. So obviously it's nearly nearly winter time. Well, it's late autumn, and obviously the bees are going to be like going like mad. But just to point out this that. You don't have to have a lot of good weather to make a massive difference. And the ivy flow is so on. You can see the activity there. It's just like unreal. This is a small colony. It was a late swarm in, in some nukes that we just managed to sort of save and put into a box. And this here is a colony that we've split a few times. And now it's uh, got a, a really good queen and we're just letting it, we just keep it at the workshop just to see what everything else is doing. It's quite good fun to have that here, you know. But uh, it just shows you how so little good weather can make such a massive difference you know we are really uh, at the end of it now i mean the, the ivy flow is in peak flow but there's not really a lot of time left and, and next week we've got uh we've we're losing this northerly flow so the first decent day we've had in in about four days and the, the bees are flying but what they're flying today is quality flying. There's no wind. It's still 12, 13 degrees, but they're flying really well. And the ivy wasn't washed by the rain overnight. So the ivy is like absolutely full of nectar. So this is the, that moment where even though the flying hours are less and the conditions aren't perfect, they can fly. So they're going to bring back lots of pollen. I think there's a lot of nectar coming in this morning because there's not much pollen. There's only really nectar. Well, I can't, obviously you can't tell there's nectar, that easily but the bees are bringing something in and we know the ivy's in full fl full flower so it's pretty likely it's nectar from the ivy but uh it's so lovely to have a beautiful day i'm just up at the workshop this morning trying to get things cleaned and and clean up all the uh, queen rearing boxes we had from uh, this year all my five over fives they've all come back to be sterilized that's the base box you get that so they get it pretty dirty in a year of queen rearing because you get pushing a lot through there with huge colonies and what I do is I'm uh, cleaning the whole thing with the blowtorch. And these are obviously the boxes that went on top. So that gives you a five over five. And I put my queen excluder between the two. So there you go. But in the top, it's very simple. All I have is um, the castellations at each end. But I don't have any supports stopping the frames from moving because really they don't move that in, in the summer. Um, and uh, they're not, they're not kind of, these boxes aren't designed to, uh, to really do anything else but just hold frames temporarily for a few days, you know, because I, I move them around a lot. But these are my old style nukes I made. I mentioned these before in my previous video. These are my old style nukes that I made, but they did me really well. I'm, and I find they're great now for, for queen rearing because they're so portable. And the problem is the other boxes I've got are the six frame Dadent. There's one actually here, that's one I showed you before, full of gear at the moment, but that's the six frame. And I find that queen rearing with a six frame is too, is too much because you need to blank one off. It, the five over fives are great because they're, these are kind of more robust. And for queen rearing, you need to be kind of have a, a, a box that's really stout, strong, and you know, you can kind of throw it around a bit because there's a lot going on in the summer. You haven't got time to mess around being careful with polystyrene, blah, 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 blah. We just find that using wooden boxes in the summer for queen rearing is the best thing. But anyway, that's today's job. All this to clean uh, with a blowtorch. And then obviously we've got some mini plus frames that we're bringing back to melt out. They're just, you know, the odd one that died out that we left in the corner or whatever. It's just to be to melt it down. We're really kind of strict on hygiene. We don't leave anything lying around anymore that we can possibly do. I know I've just posted a picture on Instagram of me having some... Um, uh, a, a hive that had wax moth. This is the hive here. Obviously, we, I'm just going to clean this out now. But it does happen. What happened here is I had a hive that um, I somehow forgot about in the summer. It obviously was uh, a, a late dying out one in the spring that never did anything. So I brought it back home thinking, oh, I'll use that. I'll just stick a swarm in it, put it down, put the roof on, completely forgot about it. It was closed up with the mouse guards were on, the wax moth got in, and straight away you can see the damage that they do. But this is no big deal, you know, it's just beekeeping raw, it's what it's all about. So these boxes will all go back into storage, they'll dry out, I might even give them a lick of paint this winter. But the main thing is to get them clean now, get them put away, and carry on with the work. We've got a nice cleaning station here, like a plumber's blowtorch, you get a really good sized flame. You can put the, uh, this is excellently des designed by my colleague, 
yet again. <laughs> he's uh, He's been doing this for a long time and he built this really well. And basically you can just scrape all your propolis out on here as you clean it off with the heat gun. You've got different tools we use. This tool is like a tool for pointing. You can scrape right between there. This is why it's so good when you're doing queen rearing because you do get a lot of gunk and muck in the, in, in the cells because you've got such a massive amount of um, nurse bees and they're all working. There's also a lot of wax builders because they're basically a lot of young bees. So you want to make sure that you can scrape off your box as well. And if they're wooden, again, they do benefit because you can sterilize them really easily and you really want that clarity of, of cleanliness uh, at the end of the season so you can start afresh next year. That's why um, I really like this. It, 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 it's kind of a time to reflect a little bit. You, you can get all your boxes clean. You can start planning what you're doing next year and uh, get everything ready and put all the stuff aside. So where I am at the moment, I didn't get a lot of pollen sub on um, a lot of my colonies, but I'm still going to put a load on this next few days because the weather's good and calm. Um, I'm just going to go for it and see how it, it, it ends up. I've got all the pollen sub mixed up. I've done a couple of apries. I'm going to see how they done first as I remove the upturned feeders and if I think it's going to be good and the weather looks mild I'm still going to put on a little bit of pollen sub just a little bit to each one just to make sure they're going into that winter with a full load of protein and that I feel then that that colony is really at the maximum I can give it with it and then in two or three weeks we're going to start the oxalic acid treatments because it really will help but there's still a lot of brood so I'm kind of not really doing myself a lot of favors by going in now it will help but the time it's going to take is probably better off waiting till they're till they're um, quite, till they're broodless in another couple of weeks, and then I'm sure after next week with the decreasing light levels um, and also the weather is looks like it's going to go generally a little bit cooler from next week, and it'll be it's usually that time for us here in Brittany. It can be really warm or very pleasant like it is now till about the end of October. Then as soon as you go into early November generally you're you're into the 10 9 8 degrees kind of zone when it's mild and that that's what it can be like for the rest of the year it obviously depends on the sea temperature around us and the sea temperature is still i think 14 15 degrees but it's just you know the low light levels the sun getting lower in the sky it's just not that strong enough to to heat everything up that well it has to be exceptionally calm and nice and also with a southerly wind bringing bringing the the warm air up from like portugal way uh, right down spain and when you get that then you can get 17 18 even in the winter but it's rare it just doesn't happen and um as i say in 2014 we had an amazing ivy flow here we had a rubbish wet summer so the ground was wet and it was like fantastic high pressure with a southerly flow for like three weeks and the hives were so full they were all um, absolutely so heavy going into the winter. We could have put supers on and, and had a, 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 an ivy flow in the supers, but we didn't because we left it for the bees. But uh, we, we can only dream of times like that, and I think you get that once every 10 years. It's just a fluke. But having this weather like this now is, you know, is definitely a bonus. There's no doubt about that. It is given me uh, confidence that we've had a little better weather than last year. So my bees are going into the winter with as well as having the stuff I've given them and, and w as well as feeding them well, looking after them well, mite treating them well, and hopefully ironing out any other potential issues with thymol maybe and all that kind of stuff. I'm hoping that we really are, with this bit of decent weather, we'll have a few days now of extra feed. And as I say, any feed you can get in, now is still a bonus because they've stopped taking it from the fit from the syrup feeders now because they're bringing it in through the door and when as soon as you get a flow on they generally don't feed very well from feeders anyway it's well known that but i always say if if the conditions are right and you can get it in keep going i don't really believe in feed, feeding candy I, I think it's a massively expensive operation i think the cost of candy is enormous and i think that if you can't get your bees well fed there's probably two issues here one they might not be that good a colony anyway and two you haven't given them enough time when you stop messing around with them in the summer to start building that winter brood nest and that's my point of view that if your bees don't make it through the winter and i say this because um, i've had numerous colonies i've given candy to and over the years i've found yeah, they'll probably make it through, but they eat the candy and then they're hungry in the spring and they're hungry in the summer. Do you really want those type of genetics in your colonies that are just going to eat sugar all the time? Whereas we've got other colonies that, that are, that the, that the nukes and the hives are nice. They're reasonably heavy. They're well populated. The bees don't move in their cluster. They consume hardly anything. 
and you open them up next spring and they don't need feeding, they're just off, they just go. Is that really the type of bees you want to have to try and save? You've got to ask that question. It's like natural selection, really. Give candy if you can afford it, if you're worried they're light, but think about it, well, maybe I didn't need that colony after all. And, I, and literally, I fed some like that. They've had one candy, then the next, you know, I, I cut them into half. They've had literally a pack and a half over the winter, and they still died of starvation in the spring. You know, it's just, you, you're kind of supporting nothing. You, you're doing yourself no favours. That's just my point of view. But anyway, um, I've got to get this done. Um, loads to do here. I... Uh, Hope um, you're enjoying a bit of decent weather before the uh, winter really sets in. So whatever you are doing this weekend, I hope you get a chance to uh, tidy up your apiaries and get on with some uh, preparation for next year, start your planning. But the main thing is be well, be safe, and I'll catch you again soon. Bye for now.